Okay, I'm Lenny Milner. I'm going to talk about uh, the Greek meter, basics of Greek meter, and we're going to start with the rules of prosody, how you tell whether the syllables in the line are stressed or unstressed, or to use the traditional vocabulary, long or short. You need some kind of contrast to create rhythm, okay? Um, and there's, there's a theoretical problem in Greek, in the study of Greek meter, as to whether the real important feature um, is stress, in other words, a louder syllable versus a softer one, or the length of time that you pronounce a syllable. The standard um, books all say it's about quantity, how long a syllable is, and I've got that vocabulary wired into my brain, long and short syllables, but really we could just as well be talking about stressed and unstressed, and as English speakers we're going to read the syllables as stressed and unstressed anyhow. Um, when you stress a syllable, you pronounce it for a longer time, too. Um, so it's not really it's that important. But we need a, a basic criterion to distinguish between the two. And, um, and here's what, what we, the, the rule is. Okay, this rule, by the way, it's the exact same rule for stressed and unstressed or long and short syllables in Greek as in ancient Indian um, poetry. Um, so the, the rule is that a long or a stressed syllable, okay, contains a long vowel, a diphthong, or a short vowel, followed by two or more consonants. And it's important to realize that in Greek, some letters that we think of as consonants, like psi, xi, and zeta, are actually two consonants, okay? So, so it's a short vowel followed by uh, literally two consonants when you write, but also those, those three digraphs, which are uh, two consonants. So we can define the long or the stressed syllable as being either one of those, one that contains a, a long vowel, a diphthong, or a, a short vowel followed by two or more consonants, <clears throat> or we could say uh, what a short or unstressed syllable is, which is one that contains a short vowel not followed by two or more consonants. Um, either way, it works, okay, because they're ex mutually exclusive rules. Um, when it comes to actually uh, reading Greek poetry and learning how to read it, which is, I think, what we all want to do, um, it may not be so helpful, this rule, because it kind of slows you down. But I think it's a good starting point. In other words, when I teach Greek meter to students, I ask them to start out by writing down a bunch of lines and then marking the syllables as long or short according to this rule. There's a big problem with this rule, and that problem has to do with um, these three vowels, alpha, iota, and upsilon, which can either be long or short. And in the texts that we use, um, they're not marked as long or short. They're maybe Greek texts they tend to be, but not always. Um, and a lot of learners of Greek, myself included, sometimes don't know whether uh, um, a given alpha, iota, or epsilon is long or short. Um, you can look them up in the dictionary, but that makes a very tedious process. What you can do, however, is as assume that they are short, until, unless you really know uh, otherwise, okay? And that works most of the time. What helps is that Greek meter works according to a pattern, and, uh, and depending on what we're looking at, we can rule out certain combinations, and when you're learning how this works, um, you, can, you can try and figure out ambiguous cases just by seeing what fits and what doesn't fit the pattern. So, um, Let's, let's look at a line, okay? Um, let's, let's start with the, with the first line of the Iliad. Um, I'm going to write it down here. I'm going to write it down in... Uh, my blackboard here is short, is, is narrow, um, so I'm going to put the line in two parts. But it's important to know that the hexameter line, the line, the first line of the Iliad, which is here, is in a meter called dactylic hexameter catalectic. Here, I'm going to write that down. Um, I'll explain what that means. Um, 
um, has a has a break in the middle of it. Okay, the break is called a caesura, uh, which comes from the Latin word for cutting. Um, um, so hold on while I write this down. Okay, so. Um, let's just take the rule and mark, I'm going to mark the longs and the shorts of this particular line. So uh, um, the first word is menin, begins, has a syllable that contains an eta, so we mark that as long or stressed. Um, the next syllable contains an iota and it's only followed by one consonant, so we mark that as short. Here's a key concept that may not spring to mind when you're doing this. The spaces between words are irrelevant for purposes of meter, okay? There's a reason for that. We'll come back to it, okay? But uh, we think of spaces between words as connoting something, but they're not important, okay? Um, so we've got a long, a short. The next syllable is the, consists of the letter alpha. Our principle is to assume that it's short, okay? So we've got a, we've got a short syllable there. The next syllable is a, ei, a diphthong, so we're marking that as long. Next syllable is epsilon, that has to be short. The next syllable is th, it contains an epsilon, that's short. Um, the next syllable is a, ah, okay. Um, we're going to mark that as short, okay, but we, if we do that, we run into a problem in this meter, okay. The, the, in the meter of dactylic hexameter, there are two things that are ruled out. Um, and I'm going to make a little thing the, the, up here. One is three short syllables in a row. In general, in Greek meter, not totally always, but in general in Greek meter, uh, there's a tendency to avoid three shorts. There are some places in tragedy, for example, where you have three and more, but rarely. Okay, and the other thing that's ruled out in, um, in dactylic hexameter is a long followed by a short and another long. So da-da-da, sh three shorts, or long, short, long, dum-da-dum, they're ruled out. So if we have mark that alpha in the second syllable of thea as short, we've got three shorts in a row. So let's assume that that one's long, okay, instead of short. The next syllable is pe, which contains an eta, so that's long. The next syllable is le, that contains an eta, and that's long. We've got i, that's an iota, that, that syllable is an, only an iota, that's short. A, uh, that's also short. Then we have a phenomenon in the next syllable called synesis. Okay, there are licenses in Greek meter, I'm going to talk more about this in a moment, um, that allow you to do things that, are, uh, that don't suit the normal syllable model. And one of them is that certain combinations of letters, and mainly this one, an epsilon followed by an omega, count as diphthongs. Okay, it looks like those are not, that's not a standard diphthong, but in the meter of Greek poetry, that counts as a single syllable. So epsilon omega is the main one. And synesis means sitting together. There are two consonants that are so, two syllables that are so closely associated that they become a single one. Then the next syllable is the first syllable of Achilles' name, Achilleo, so it's an alpha. We're going to mark it as short. We've got the short, next syllable is also short. We've got, it's just an iota. Then eta for a, and os is going to be a short, okay? Um, if we, if we look at this um, in terms of what the pattern of the rhythm is, okay, this meter, I'm going to switch to another page, here's the overall pattern of the meter. It consists of two kinds of feet or, or uh, uh, rhythmical units. One is called a dactyl, which is a long followed by two shorts, or a stress followed by two unstressed syllables. And the other is a spondy, which is a uh, two stressed syllables in a row, okay? And the overall pattern consists of, of um, five, syllable, five feet that can be either of these two, okay? Um, uh, um, hold on. A long followed by two, by, a long followed by two shorts, or a long followed by a long. So I'm gonna write down a sequence of them, long, short, short, or long, 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 short, short, or long, 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 short, short, long, 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 short, short, 
or long, long. So that's four. I'm going to run the fifth one. Okay, long, short, short, long, long. And then the last foot, which I've run out of room for, is uh, consists of a long or and a single short or a long and a long. Okay, and that's the end of the line. So I'm going to mark the beginning and the end of the line with a sharp sign. Okay, and what we have are six feet. Okay, six units. Um, that's why we call it a hexameter. Six metrical units. Okay, and um, it's dactylic because uh, that, that's the, the way the Greeks understood it, that it was um, predominantly dactylic, but you could substitute, and this is an important rule in general, you can substitute uh, in the meter um, for one long, two shorts, okay? And this is uh, um, a, 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 an overall rule in Greek meter in general, that they're equivalents. Um, but as all we're interested in at this point is how it works in this particular rhythm. So you got five of them, and then the last one, we seem to have lost the last syllable. In other words, we got, have five dactyls for which the short syllables you can substitute as spondy, but in the sixth foot, we can get away with losing one of them. We can have the last syllable be short as well as long. Okay, in other words, the quantity of the last syllable doesn't matter, but we seem to have lost a last syllable from the point of view of, of the meter. And that process of the swallowing or the losing of the last syllable is called catalexis, which means slowing down. So if, you, if the meter went like this, dum da da 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 dum it wouldn't stop, okay? Um, so the way it's, it's like when people are marching in a rhythm, when you come to a, the, a stopping point, you, you have, some, have to have some kind of a closure. And the closure in the hexameter line is the dropping off of that syllable. So here's the here's the way the pattern sounds. Dum da da 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 dum bum. Okay, we have a we have a missing syllable. It gives you a stopping point. So when you come to the next line, you know you've finished one. Okay, in in the there there are other features to this line. That's the overall pattern. So if we go back to the line that we scanned, the first line of the Iliad, and we looked at it, scanning is the process of marking the longs and the shorts, okay? We've got menena, there's a dactyl. Aided the, that's another dactyl. Uh, a, pe, that's a spondy. Leia, that's a dactyl. Yoachi, another dactyl. And then eos, a, a long followed by a short. So we, we, we have a scansion or a... Uh, an account of the line that, that fits the overall pattern as I've just described it, the dactylic hexameter catalectic. So the idea is that it's predominantly dactylic. The, the, when, you, when you have a spondy instead of a dactyl, it's, it's, a, it's a substitution for the dactylic rhythm. Um, but there are a lot of lines that are all, all dactylic and a lot of lines that are um, mainly spondaic. Um, there's, a, there's one one uh, principle about the distribution of the longs of the dactyls and the spondees um, there's a tendency to avoid the spondy in the fifth foot. It seems to slow down the line, okay? And you'll notice it when you start reading these, it sounds a little bit weird, okay? Um, but it happens. Um, the other thing is that there's a compulsory word end uh, in this line. It's compulsory, that is, there are 99% of the lines have, in the dactylic hexameter, have it. Um, within a foot, with, oops, um, which is um, within the third foot after the first long or short. Okay? So, um, or short. So if we go back and look at the overall pattern, that means that one, two, three, dum da da dum da da dum after you can have a word break, and I'm going to mark it with two lines, after the first long, or you can have it after the first short, dum da da dum da da dum bum after the, at that point. That is, every line has a has a word that ends at that particular point. It doesn't mean that there is an actual pause, okay? Um, but statistically speaking, this is uh, obligatory, okay? Um, it, it turns out that a lot of rhythms have this kind of a word break in them. 
and when uh, Milton Parry and Albert Lord were recording uh, uh, like, uh, epic songs in Yugoslavia, that line is a ten-syllable line. You, you have counting of syllables, and there's a rhythm, there are rhythmic tendencies to it, but there's a compulsory word break in it, and, um, and they couldn't hear it. But the audience of the songs would stamp their feet and hiss at the singers or something like that when, they, when the singer messed up and didn't have it. So they, could, they knew it was there, and they could feel whether it was there or not. So it messed up the rhythm for them, okay? And it wasn't an audible pause or anything. So this is an important feature rhythmically. Where does it come from? Well, I'll tell you where it comes from, okay? It comes from the fact that this is poetry composed in phrases, okay? And, and uh, here, here we've done something really crazy, which is start out with patterns of longs and shorts, okay? When poetry consists of words, not patterns of longs and shorts. And, and uh, I think it's, it's mind-boggling to think about poets composing with patterns of longs and shorts. I think our kinds of poets do, but that's not the way it worked in antiquity. People had patterns of words that were metrical, uh, that were a repertory, okay? And, and an unconscious repertory for them. So they, they, they composed in word groups, and the a caesura marks word group endings, okay? Um, where one would end and another one would begin. There are also other, uh, statistically speaking, important word, en word endings within a foot in the dactylic hexameter. One's at the, at the, um, at the well, no, that's, a, that's not a caesura, it's a, it's a so-called diaresis. And this is, there's the caesura, which is a word ending within a foot, and the diaresis is when you have a compulsory word end at the beginning or the end of a foot. So there's another one of those um, at the beginning of, at the end of the fourth foot or the beginning of the fifth, okay? Um, a whole lot of lines end with the, um, the pattern dum da da dum bum because you avoid the substitution um, of, a, of a long for two shorts in the fifth foot. So it's shave and a haircut, right? Um, it's, a, it's a pretty standard pattern that's called the Adonic after the refrain in the poem of Sappho's, O ton Adonin, dum da da dum bum. Anyhow, there are a lot of expressions that fit that particular um, part of the meter uh, in epic poetry and also between the caesura and that diaresis, for example. So you can really show that these compulsory word breaks are part of the compositional process that's going on in the mind of the singer, uh, statistically speaking and otherwise. All right, so so much for the, for the, uh, for the pattern, okay, and for how to, how to scan the lines, okay. We need to, the other thing we need to know is about these metrical licenses, okay, um, involved in scanning. And I talked about one of them, that is synesis, okay, the sitting together of two vowels. Um, mainly epsilon and omega, which count as one syllable, okay? Um, but the other one, and this is the most important one, and there weren't any examples of it in that one particular line, is this. Within a line, okay, when you have, uh, whether you have a word break or not, um, when you have a long vowel at the end of a word or a diphthong, okay, and the next word begins with either a long or a short vowel, or a diphthong, okay, the, 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 the meter of the last syllable of the a word, the one that ends in a long vowel or a diphthong, can be scanned as either long or short, okay? In other words, you would think that a syllable ending in a diphthong or a long vowel would be a long syllable, okay? I'm talking about ending in that long vowel or diphthong. If there's a consonant after it, it has to be whatever, it has to be a long syllable. But if there's no consonant after it, and it ends with a long vowel or a diphthong, and the next word begins with any kind of a vowel, then you, the, the singer has the option of counting that as a short syllable, okay? Of the, the, the concept is described as corruption, which means shortening of the syllable, okay? So um, uh, we need to look at an example or two of this. Uh, let's see, let me think of a line. So I'm talking about the metrical license of corruption, okay, and we've got a, another line, which is actually, I think, the 12th line or the 11th line of the Iliad of the first book, and, and we're going to scan it, okay? So um, again, go through this process. The, the first syllable, stem, is an, a short vowel, epsilon, followed by two consonants, two mu's, okay? Next one, it contains only an alpha, a, stemma, 
Dach is another one with a short vowel. So we've got our first foot, a, a long, short, short, a dactyl. The next syllable is own, contains a long vowel, the omega. The next syllable is n, it's got a short vowel followed by two consonants. Again, we count the consonants in the past the word break. So that's another foot, uh, spondy. Her is long because it's a short vowel followed by two consonants. Sin is short because it's an iota followed by one consonant. Okay, there's our compulsory word break after the in the third foot after the first short. Okay, next syllable is short. Okay, end of a foot. The next syllable is long. Uh, K, balu. Okay, so if we follow our pattern, we've got a long syllable there because it contains a long vowel. The next syllable has to be short because it's ba. The next syllable is u. Okay, so that gives us, if we scan it that way, we've got long, short, long, which we said is if, in, impossible in dactylic hexameter. But here's the, what's going on here. That's at the end of a word. It's a diphthong. Okay, the next word is apolonos. It begins with a short vowel. Okay, so what happens is that we shorten that one and we mark it as a short syllable. Okay, so that's the process of corruption. All right, and the pattern gets preserved. And then we got short, long, hake, balu, rather long, apol, right, this is a, that's another metrical license. Um, in some cases, the, the, especially in names, okay, the poet can, can, uh, um, what appears to be arbitrarily um, um, mark the consider the first syllable of a name that would or of an adjective that would otherwise be uh, short as long. Okay, um, so this is a, a long alpha. Um, ah, Paul, and we have the thing that we that I said you try to avoid that is two longs in the fifth foot, but it happens, and then onos. So here's the whole line. Stem matachon and hersineke balu apolonos. You unstress the diphthong in hake balu and you get the pattern. All right. Um, we write, we're written, we've written down the longs and the shorts, and we talked about the metrical structures and the main metrical licenses, synesis and corruption. Okay. Okay. When it comes to really learning meter, the best thing to do is to uh, listen and read. Okay. And not think about. The rules that I've just told you. It's like, it's like if you thought about the grammar of every sentence as you spoke it, you would hardly be able to speak in a normal way. So when, when you really want to learn this, the best thing to do is to write down ten lines or five lines and, and do the scansion of the lines so you, you see what, the, what you're doing, okay? And then, um, then here's what we do. We, we, I, the, the writing system does longs and shorts, but it's really about stressed and unstressed syllable. And when you read, what you do is you stress the long syllable and you don't stress the short ones, okay? Just to be clear. So um, what you want to do is first read them for yourself and then memorize five lines in the rhythmical pattern, okay? So you get it inside you. I, I think it's, it's really a, a body thing, meter, okay? And if you possess five lines in the rhythm of the dactylic hexameter, you'll be able to read any line you see just by reading it and without even thinking about longs and shorts. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just recite some lines so you get a sense of the, what the pattern sounds like if it's helpful. And I'm not very good at it, but I'll do my best. Okay, so here's the beginning of the Iliad. Men in aeda the a pele yajo achileos. U lamenen he muria chaios alge theken. Paul las dipthi mus psu chas a idipriapsen he ro on al tus de haloria tel hekunesen. Oio noise te passe diaste telea tabule ex hu de ta prota diaste ten erisante atre edeste anax andron kai dias achilleus. You want to get a sense of what these sound, sound like, and if you recite them enough, you'll get the pattern in your in your blood, in your body, from your from, of the rhythm.